Hello and welcome everyone and so far now we have uh, discussed on the solution of equation of motions and different numericals based on that and now we are going to encounter when our system is having more than one spring. So what happens when there are more than one springs? The springs are connected either in series or parallel or even both. So this is called combination of a springs. All right. And when we are going for a spring combinations, then we have to calculate the equivalent stiffness of a spring combination. So this is what we are going to study today. And this is the topic title is equivalent stiffness of spring combinations. Uh, sometimes it can be connected in an inclined position also. We are going to see when a spring will be connected in inclined position. So in that case, they can be replaced by a single spring of the same stiffness as they all show the same stiffness as a whole. Means uh, we are going to replace the entire spring combination by a spring of a stiffness having equivalent stiffness of a spring combination. You understand that? So that stiffness of the spring combination which is replaced by a single spring is called as equivalent stiffness and it is represented as k eq eq is in the subscript so as we have said that a spring are combined either in parallel or in series so you must have done uh, combination of resistance in the electrical courses basic electricals and there we uh, combine resistance in either in series or either in parallels in an electrical circuit. So what would used to happen there? If you remember uh, a bit about those resistance, uh, we used to calculate the equivalent resistance R equivalent and if uh, resistances are connected, resistors are connected in series. So in that case, the equivalent resistance would be summation of R i all the individual resistance are added algebra uh, simply numerically and if resistance are connected in parallel combination in that case it is equal to basically uh, it is calculated by taking reciprocal 1 by r equivalent is equal to summation of 1 by r i okay so this is how we used to calculate the equivalent resistance in series and parallel. But in case of uh, combination of springs in parallel, things are almost similar, but exactly reverse of the case in the resistors. Here the formula will be just vice versa. Let us see the proofs. Okay. So here springs are connected in parallel. We are taking first of all the first case when the springs are connected in parallel. Parallel that means uh, one spring, uh, the, both the springs are connected to the same ends. You are seeing both the springs have same ends. Okay. So when two springs are connected in parallel as shown in this figure, uh, the springs in a system subjected to a common deflection. Now if you deflect this mass by m by delta, then delta 1 is the deflection in a spring 1 and delta 2 is the deflection in a spring 2. So we can say that deflection will be same in all the cases. Static deflection remains same. Okay, And the load, total load supported here is the sum of the individual loads shared by each spring. Okay, If we are applying a load uh, downward w, then this w is shared by spring 1 as w1 and a spring 2 as w2. So we can write that w is equal to w1 plus w2. Alright. Now we know that uh, k, k is equal to what? w upon delta. This is clear. As we know f is equal to kx. This formula must be clear to you. Okay force in the spring is equal to the stiffness times the displacement. So from this we can write k is equal to w, w is the force here and delta is the displacement. Okay. So uh, we can write uh, this equation also as k equivalent y delta 
is equal to k1 by delta 1 plus k2 by delta 2 all right and we know that delta is equal to delta 1 is equal to delta 2 because this is a parallel uh, combination of springs okay delta was equal to delta 1 and delta 2 these all are same so they will cancel okay denominator is same so we can simply write uh, that k equivalent will be equal to k1 plus k2 all right so the same thing is done here okay k equivalent is equal to k1 plus k2 so we have arrived to the conclusion here and we can say that ke is called equivalent stiffness of the system and equivalent spring stiffness is equal to the sum of individual spring stiffness in case of a spring combination in parallel okay so we can generalize uh, the summation uh, like this okay k equivalent is equal to summation of k i i is equal to 1 to n if there are n number of springs in parallel let us take the second case in which the springs are connected in series okay so here you have we consider two linear springs of a stiffness k1 and k2 you see it and they are arranged in series fashion this is series because they are connected uh, one end of a spring is here and one end of a spring is here so the one end uh, of one spring is connected with the other end of other spring so that type of combination is called series combination okay try to remember it that one end of the spring is connected with the other end of another spring so that type of combination is series combination springs in series so when the springs are connected in series and if they uh, share a common load so see when we apply a load w here okay so this w remain constant in this spring also the force is w in this spring also the force is w so in this case there is no w1 or w2 like that a spring uh, all the springs share common load but the deflection if the deflection is delta downwards then the deflection in the spring 1 is delta 1 and spring uh, deflection in spring 2 is delta 2 and we can write the total deflection delta is given by delta is equal to delta 1 plus delta all right so after understanding this our work is almost done since w is equal to w1 and here w1 and w2 all the loads are equal okay because it's a common load here because they are in a uh, springs are in series so we know that here delta is equal to w by k from where this formula came f is equal to kx x is here delta okay and uh, x can be written as f divided by k so the same thing is done here and uh, this uh, de this value this equation is now written as like this here w y k equivalent okay is equal to w y k1 plus w y k2 all right and since w is same common in all the springs okay so w will be cancelled out and uh, the final equation comes out to be like this 1 by k is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 so when the springs are connected in series the reciprocal here this is the reciprocal when the springs are connected in series the reciprocal of equivalent spring stiffness is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of individual spring stiffnesses and in general for n number of springs in series we can write 1 by ke is equal to summation of reciprocals of all the individual stiffnesses ki i is equal to 1 to n so we can conclude uh, when the springs are connected in parallel what happens when you connect the springs in parallel what will happen if you connect a spring of say stiffness uh, 10 uh, 10 newton per meter 
and you also connect a spring of uh, one newton per meter so if you connect these two types of springs in parallel so what will happen in parallel the k equivalent will be equal to 11 newton per meter simply add them but in case of uh, what will happen in case of series connection in series what will happen k equivalent in series let's write it and this will be equal to 10 by 11 you can do this from this formula so we see that it has become even less than one isn't it it has become less than one so when we connect the springs in parallel that means we are going to increase the stiffness of the system and when the uh, system stiffness increases means the system is becoming more stiffer so it tends to increase the amount of load required to produce unit deflection now if you have a bit deflection karna hoga, to jada load lagana hoga. and we can say the spring is becoming harder and harder okay but when the springs are connected in series series mein kya ho jata hai? it helps to reduce the stiffness of the component springs आपने एक बहुत ही मजबूत स्प्रिंग ली 10 न्यूटन पर मीटर स्टिफनेस की पर उसके साथ एक वीक वीक स्प्रिंग भी डाल दी सीरीज में 1 न्यूटन पर मीटर वाली तो क्या हो गया आपकी स्टिफनेस वीकर से भी कम हो गई है ठीक है सो इन अदर वर्ड्स वी कैन से द रिजल्टिंग इक्विवेलेंट स्प्रिंग रिक्वायर्स लेस अमाउंट ऑफ लोड टू प्रोड्यूस यूनिट डिफ्लेक्शन एंड द स्प्रिंग बिकम्स सॉफ्टर सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दीस वर्ड्स spring getting harder in parallel combination and spring becoming softer in case of series combination all right so this is how we calculate the equivalent stiffness of springs in combination now in some cases uh, we encounter also when the springs are connected at a certain inclination so those cases are called inclined spring okay and in this case you are seeing a diagram in this diagram we are seeing inclined spring here connected and the mass m is moving in x direction as shown here x direction is this and uh, the spring is attached to the direction of motion by an angle theta and for a displacement x of mass m the corresponding stretch in the spring how much it will be it will be x cos theta okay displacement will be delta is equal to x cos theta so force in the spring spring force will be f spring will be equal to k x cos theta okay and this force is also inclined towards this angle only theta so the component of this force in the direction of motion will be equal to f s cos theta so fs cos theta will be equal to kx cos a square theta so we can say that for displacement x the equivalent stiffness of a spring is equal to k equivalent is equal to k cos a square theta okay so here spring stiffness is reduced to k cos a square theta remember this all right and if uh, there are n number of inclined springs in k in parallel then uh, the summation is done like this okay simply take the summation of all this all the individual stiffnesses ki cos square theta added from 1 to n okay and uh, one more thing that i wanted to just uh, show you that here in case of natural frequency and time period uh, actually they do not much depend upon the gravitational force okay and uh, we have seen that the uh, oscillation in shm the equation of motion is simply given by this formula mostly most of the time this formula this solution is used for any equation of motion and phi is the phase angle and we can say that this is a periodic motion and in periodic motion uh, the difference the time period is the interval in which the phase of the this is what we have discussed uh, the proof for t is equal to 2 pi by omega n and omega n is the uh, equal to root under k by m 
and uh, in the last video we have discussed k can be written as w by delta st delta st is the static displacement okay and uh, m can be written as w by g so omega can be finally written as root under g by delta st okay so we can write time period also in terms of static displacement and gravity and here it may also be noted that natural frequency is independent of amplitude of vibration so this is important amplitude of vibration doesn't interfere in the value of natural frequency and uh, it is also independent of initial conditions okay omega n simply depends upon the delta st okay omega n simply depends on delta st it do not depends on any other thing else because g is a universal constant now the one thing that can come into the mind isn't the gravitational force mg influence the equation of motion when the spring are used in vertical position just like if we see here we are uh, using a spring of a stiffness say k and we are attaching one end of a spring with the ceiling and this is the unsupported length of a spring and when we hang a mass with the other end of the spring it gets a static displacement delta st is equal to here represented by greek letter delta and this is the mean position mean position means now net force is zero so we can say that k delta st is equal to w w is the weight and w can be written as uh, m into g okay so this is mean position and if the mass is stretched at any time t by a displacement x from the mean position so static equilibrium position will remain same at the mean position only and this mass will start oscillating okay in the vertical position but the equation of motion will not be influenced by the gravitational force mg although you may be thinking that in this spring mass system there is an external force mg isn't it but no that mg gets cancelled by this component of delta st and you can check it in free body diagram that this mass block is being applied constantly by a gravity force downwards and w is equal to mg but this is not a forced vibration it remains free vibration only how because this w will be cancelled by this delta okay and now if we have given some extra displacement x so now the spring force will be k into delta plus x okay and this is the uh, uh, force which we apply usually as per d alambert's principle an imaginary force that is equal to mass into acceleration mass into acceleration mass is equal to w by g so when we uh, use d alambert principles and apply equation of motion here uh, it comes out to be minus w by g x double dot it is upward and upward we have taken minus sign minus k x plus delta plus w is equal to 0 and uh, putting m equal to w by g and here w is the gravity force acting downward and we know that w is equal to k times delta delta is the static displacement and here k delta when we replace it by w it gets cancelled so the equation of motion remains same here isn't it it is mx double dot plus kx equal to zero so this is uh, the equation of motion in free vibration undamped free and damped vibration so even if we use the springs in vertical position the gravity force need not to be considered okay um, and the equation of dynamic system is not affected at all by the gravity force so this is something which many a times comes into the mind of uh, readers and students so hope this must be clear to you and we will be discussing some numericals at least four or five numericals on this topic of equivalent stiffness of a spring combinations in the upcoming videos so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you